Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker and today's a video that I really didn't imagine myself making this year and that is a general manager Monday kind of video on the Charlotte Hornets. If you've been around on the channel for a bit, you might know that I used to do a series called General Manager Monday, where I would take a look at a particular team and basically just lay out some roster construction options for them moving forward, whether it be trades or free agency signings or opening up cap space, whatever I think the viable options are. I have a few teams in mind for this in the future without the specific day of the week attached to it, obviously, such as the Nuggets, Jazz, Lakers, and even the Kings, for example, but with the early season success of Kemba Walker, who's been a machine to start this year, and to a lesser extent, the team success of the Hornets, I found myself really wanting to talk about them. So I'm gonna go through three possible options that could work. Not necessarily what I'll think they'll do, but just a few directions that they could go in. And at the end, I'll tell you which one I would pick, and you guys can do the same in the comment section below. Let's go ahead and get started. But before I get into specifics, there are a few things that I want to talk about that I'll continue to come back to throughout the video. The first is, well, it's Kemba Walker. Everything that the franchise does moving forward is going to revolve around their best player and his impending free agency. Walker is being paid $12 million this season, which is only the sixth highest number on his team, if you can believe that, and is an unrestricted free agent this coming summer. He is apparently very committed to the franchise, and they really want to keep him by all reports, but things could get interesting depending on how well he can sustain his current level of play. Because he is with the team that drafted him and is in a contract year, if he's named to an All-NBA team for this season, he would be eligible for a Supermax deal that would give him a gigantic raise, which brings up two important questions. The first, would the Hornets be willing to pay him the Supermax if he's eligible, and if not, what would they be willing to offer him? The Hornets would still be able to offer Walker more money than any other team, even if their offer wasn't the full Supermax, and with a guard approaching his 30s, giving him that kind of money would certainly be a questionable move, in my opinion. The second thing I want to go over is the Hornets' payroll. They have a top 15 salary figure in the league this season, and won't have any significant cap space as currently constructed until the summer of 2020. Not that Charlotte has ever been a big free agency destination, but cap space is an asset all itself for the purposes of collecting draft picks for salary dumps for other teams, not just for signing free agents. There are a number of big player options for next season that could open up some space for them, but I would imagine that all three of Bismack Biyombo, Marvin Williams, and Michael Kidd Gilchrist will opt in. Among Charlotte's best players, basically all of them that aren't on rookie contracts or named Kemba Walker are overpaid. So that high payroll number will come into play in each of these options. Option one, trade for a star. The first option here is one in which Charlotte pushes for the playoffs this season and moving forward by trading for another star alongside Walker and riding that pairing as far as it will take them beyond this season by bringing back Kemba in the summer of 2019. The first name that will probably come to mind here is one that a few people asked me to create a trade for to the Hornets in the comments section of my last NBA trade machine episode, and that is Bradley Beal. There have been some reports that they are actively pursuing a deal to bring him to Charlotte, and here's one that might work. The trade is Beal to the Hornets for Jeremy Lamb, Michael Kidd Gilchrist, Malik Monk, and a 2019 top 10 protected first round pick. For the Wizards, each of those three players and the pick could play into their long-term rebuilding plans, while Lamb is on an expiring contract if they don't want to keep him, and Kid Gilchrist will be off the books in 2020 as well if they don't want to bring him back either. For the Hornets, they do have to give up some rotation players and a pick, but none of them come close to the on-court value of Beal, who fits nicely in the backcourt alongside Kemba and provides them much-needed shooting and on-ball playmaking. Their rotation would be a bit thin after this move, but the star power of their new backcourt would provide them a much needed boost in top end talent. Losing the pick isn't ideal for a team that lacks very much young talent, but this isn't a bad price to pay for a player of Beal's caliber. Moving forward, this roster should be enough to get them into the playoffs, although probably not a seed above the core five at the top of the East at the moment, those being the Raptors, Celtics, Sixers, Bucks, and Pacers. In the off season, the long-term thinking here was always to bring back Walker alongside Beal anyway, although it is tough to speculate on how big of a contract Kemba would sign without knowing if he is eligible for a Supermax right now. As I talked about in the beginning, however, without a salary dump move of some kind, the salary cap space flexibility of the team is extremely hampered for 2019 at least. The long-term goal of this specific option would be to be competitive in the 2019-20 season, and if they can get to the summer of 2020 and find a way to get rid of Nicholas Batum's contract before then, even assuming they give Kemba the Supermax, they would enter that offseason with around 
$20 million in cap space, which isn't great, and it's two years in the future, so long term it probably isn't the best plan, but they're in a tough spot payroll wise and a Beal trade would take up a lot of their assets that they could possibly use to try and dump salaries. But they would be much better with Beal on the team and would very likely be a playoff team in the East both this year and moving forward. Option two, trade Kemba. And this is the part where you realize that not all these options are based off the reported plans of the franchise. All reports seem to indicate that the Hornets are leaning towards an option one kind of situation in which they keep Kemba and trade for some help for him. But in this option, they would be doing the opposite. I lobbied for them to do this last year rather than this season, simply because I didn't think his trade value would be as high this season as a potential less than one year rental, but I have a trade that could work this season anyway. The deal is Kemba Walker to the Pacers for Miles Turner, Corey Joseph, and a top 10 protected 2019 first round pick. First, let me talk about this from Indiana's perspective because I know Pacers fans love their guy, Miles Turner. Look, he's a good young big, but we've been waiting on his breakout year for two years now and it hasn't happened. He's still young, obviously, and defensively, he's a really good rim protector with a bit of range on his jump shot. But Demata Sabonis is a better player anyway, in my opinion, so opening up more minutes for him in the front court while filling the hole at the point guard spot that has existed for a while, with all due respect to Darren Collison, would be a good option. For the Hornets, they get an intriguing young big that is signed to a long-term deal, plus some extra draft capital for a player in Kemba that will either leave for nothing this summer, or they'll have to give a ton of money to over the long term to keep him, which again, probably isn't smart for a guard approaching his 30s, despite his fantastic play to begin this season. I have a feeling there will be some big opinions on this trade in the comment section, but to me, this deal works well for both sides. Beyond this, everything for Charlotte will be about shedding salary, adding draft picks, and building around their most promising young players while resetting their roster once again. Option three, no trades, re-sign Kemba. This last option is one that is actually fairly likely if the Hornets can't find a trade that they like to try and bring in any kind of significant help for Walker. In this scenario, they would keep their current roster, re-sign him this offseason, and try to move some of their bigger contracts to improve the team in 2020 and beyond. As I've said already, it would be difficult to create any kind of meaningful cap space for 2019 with their big payroll, but if they can somehow find a taker for Nicholas Batum's contract, which is a big if, they could go into the summer of 2020 with max cap space and some change, even if they give Kemba the full max or even super max in 2019. The big difference between this and option one is Beal's salary isn't on the book, so they have a lot more cap space freed up for that summer, and if players like Malik Monk and Miles Bridges and even Michael Kidd Gilchrist really start to blossom and they hit on their 2019 draft pick, they could be a somewhat intriguing free agency destination. I mean, if we're being honest, it's a bit of a stretch to think that they'll be able to land a max contract level player here, considering they don't have much, if any, of a pedigree of landing big time free agents, but again, cap space in general is always considered an asset, even if you don't sign any new players, simply because it gives you the kind of flexibility that allows a team to move in basically any direction they want to in terms of roster construction. It is tough to give an exact number on how much salary cap space Charlotte would have in this scenario or really any scenario without knowing what Walker's new deal would be worth on an annual basis, but it would definitely be enough for a max contract slot and for the Hornets to try and make some moves and build a competitive roster in an immediate sense with Walker and whoever they bring in, as well as a team with a long-term future under the guidance of Bridges and Monk. For me personally, I probably would have to go with option number two, simply because if I'm the Hornets, I'm not really interested in paying Walker the max and definitely not the super max, not because he isn't a great player, but because over the later years of the contract, he simply wouldn't be worth it. As NBA history has told us time and time again that for most star guards, they don't age especially well into their 30s, especially undersized ones. It would be tough to trade away a player that has been so blindly loyal to the franchise, but if I could get back Miles Turner and a pick and move forward from there with Malik Monk and Miles Bridges as my other two foundational pieces, I'd be happy. I am slightly intrigued by the possibility of option one because I think Beal and Walker would be great together in the backcourt, but once Kemba's game starts to decline with age, the payroll would be really difficult for me to deal with personally. If only the team hadn't invested long-term money into the players that are currently at the top of the payroll, they would have a lot more flexibility to make moves in free agency and the trade market. But as it stands right now, I would more than likely choose to trade Kemba Walker and start from scratch rather than pay him the max or super max just to be a sixth 
seventh or eighth seed in the East for the next handful of seasons at best. But as always, I'd love to hear y'all's opinions in the comment section below on which option you would choose. And that is going to be the end of today's video, and I thank you all very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.